how are you guys leading through this storm? Jeffrey and I are talking to a lot of leaders right now that there's tough decisions. And I think employees know that vendors and you're communicating with your clients on a daily basis. Um, how are you guys leading through this? And what are you, what are you following? We realize there's no right or wrong answers here, but we're really just putting together this serious series too, to focus on how people are leading during the storm. Yeah, I, I, I look at it from a perspective of, uh, if you think about it from a situational leadership standpoint, you know, what combination of direction, support do you need to provide? And I think it's high direction, high support right now um, because no one has been through this before. That's correct. Um, situational leadership from uh, Doc Hersey or from Ken Blanchard? Ken Blanchard. Yeah. So, Lauren, can you give us some examples, like just how you're doing that right now? Yeah, so for example, um, we have to give much more direction to our employees. They're working at home for the first time. So video cameras on, you know, you need to get up in the morning and take your shower, go through your routine, make sure you're ready for the day. You need to have a place in your home where you can actually work, where it can be quiet. Maybe you're away from your TV, you're not on your bed those types of items and then creating metrics that can easily be managed to determine, you know, what success looks like uh, on a daily basis. So that is definitely one. And then I think the other one is, you know, I think about it from a, you know, uh, more of a wartime leader than a peacetime leader. We're, we're in a war here and uh, you need to be, you need to have a plan. However, you know, as Mike Tyson says, as soon as you get punched in the face, that plan kind of goes out the window. And so, <laughs> You need to be agile and figure out what the next step is. And you need to be decisive in those steps so that the people who are relying on you are confident that you're going to lead them through this uh, and they're going to survive. Yeah, you might think of yourself as a, a – think of Mike Tyson as an idiot, but I'm going to tell you what. That one statement puts him in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, Totally in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. How about you, David? Yeah, and Brian, from our perspective, I look at it in two areas, right? One is our salespeople. You know, we're doing a lot of what Lauren just talked about. I mean, the, as soon as we sent everybody home in, in early March, it was, uh, you know, here's how you use Zoom. We gave them a tutorial on it, and so we did those things. We also encourage them, as Lauren said, too, is turn your cameras on, right, and, and yep. force your customers to do that because they are so used to reading body language and – and doing that and so we, we've been um, doing that we, we also you know I've got an administrative staff as well and sort of the back office our marketing teams and a delivery team you know we're doing small coffee corners that are virtual I probably do three or four of those a day yeah. we're just getting teams together and make sure everybody's got their cameras on we did a virtual lunch for the entire company last week where we sent out uh, 400 Grubhub, uh, you know, coupons to everybody in North America. And we said, you know, order your lunch if you're not comfortable with it or want to donate your money to local hospitals. We'll do that for you. We raised about $3,000 in doing it and had, I think, uh, close to 200 people on Zoom eating lunch together. Mm, this Thursday, yeah. yeah, this Thursday, we're going to do a cocktail hour where they can bring their, their favorite be beverage, alcohol or non. And you know, what we're hearing from our employees, you know, a lot of them have been virtual, but just during these times, they want that connection with the company. You know, they know, going back to the management style, you know, that there's, there's going to be ups and downs, but when they can see other people's faces that are going through this, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think there's some comfort in that. It, it's also interesting as a manager, you know, how you manage through that, because, you know, there's been a lot of videos where, you know, people's dogs are barking or the kids are running through the background and, you know, jumping in and our CEO. Our kids, not Brian's kids. It never <laughs> happens. <laughs> our, our CEO did a video the other day and he had his nine-year-old daughter film it. And it was actually comical because, you know, you could see her moving the camera and she focused in on a picture of her on the, on his desk. And it just added a, a, added a sense of, of, uh, of personalization that yeah. I think you need during these times. How do you guys, uh, right now you're probably getting a lot of customer calls and having to work through different things like agreements and um, 
contracts. You know, how are you guys going about that and how are you guys communicating, collaborating back and forth on that yeah. during this time? Uh, uh, Lauren, I'll, I'll go first if you don't mind. One of the things we're trying to do is proactively with customers get ahead of it. Mm -hmm. So we just came out with three initiatives that are sort of, you know, this is how we can help companies today. And it's, you know, we're not looking for revenue or we're not trying to do engagement. So, you know, let's go in and look at your supply chain and, and where your, um, your vendors and your partners are at. And, and are there going to be any effects based upon closures of buildings and, and areas? So we're trying to be proactive to say, we're going to be here for the long haul. So should you. And, you know, this engagement's, I call it a customer for life. So are there things that we can do to proactively help you? Now, with that said, we're still getting the calls, right? I think 25% of our existing projects, people asked us to either take a haircut or slow down or just, you know, stop and pause until the end of the year. And so I we're just in the haircut through. business if I were you. <laughs> um, take it from unless, me. Uh, unless it's a personal hey, haircut. Hey, David. Moby's coming back. It, it, it's interesting, though, that companies that we've been talking to that are more proactive because they know the calls are coming rather than being reactive yeah. are the ones that Jeffrey and I have talked a lot about this, that they're winning during this time because it's almost refreshing when you're reaching out to a client saying, hey, we know what's going on. We're going through the same thing let's talk about our agreement. I mean, to your point, that's a customer for life because they're not going to forget that, especially when the sun comes out, right? They'll probably yeah. end up spending more and investing more money into you because you were proactive during that. We think a lot of people are just kind of sitting back going, oh, I hope they don't call today. <laughs> <Right>? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but those are the conversations that we're having. The companies yeah. who help the most now help customers win are the ones that are going to recover in a big way. They're going to, they'll have that customer for life. They'll have that loyalty. They'll have that goodwill feeling. And there's going to be less cutthroat and more humanity coming into our society just based on what's happened. How about you, Lauren? Yeah, Q2 is a big renewal quarter for us. So we've been proactive in um, exchanging additional years for um, delayed payments or, or better terms. And those, those conversations have went well. Yeah, that's the right thing to do. People just want to take the pressure off. Hey, uh, David, you mentioned something about your CEO and um, his daughter, that experience. I mean, we're also talking a lot about fires, the leaders that lead you. What are you seeing during this time? And love that example because that's where, you know, people feel more safe. They feel more comfortable working from home. Like Lauren and David, just what are your experience of you know, how people are leading you right now? Because it, let's face it this is a time we just, it, it's almost different than 9-11 because there was an ending and then we could restart and recover. Right now, we can't see the ending. We don't know. We don't know if it's three months, six months, a year. We do know the sun will come out and we'll all thrive again and everything will be great. But how are they leading during this time? Because it's, it's kind of the unknown world. Yeah. It's interesting because um, the first thing that, that I was able to do was just connect with my peers and, you know, people that, that I see in this marketplace that have probably experienced it. Uh, we're owned by Bridge Growth Partners and, and, and they, you know, have an amazing board, you know, ex-CEO of EMC and Accenture and, you know, so I had a conversation with them. But what was really interesting is they've all said they've never been through something like this. Mm -hmm. So to me, that was the first warning that basically says, hey, you know, we're new times, right? And so it's okay not to have the answer and to be comfortable saying that. And to me, that was one. And then the other one that early in the process, you know, it was the, the, the conversation was people are talking about changes, not using a scalpel. They're looking at changes, looking with access, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was when you make these changes, it's not just turning a couple dials, but this is really going to impact the way that people look at business and that, it's a change in lifestyle. It's a change in the way, it's a dramatic change in the way people do business. And that was an early message that I got. Mm -hmm. um, and so that really helped me. And just the other one is just, I you know, go back to the, the leadership piece is being front and center. Uh, you know, I've done more 
coffee corners, connections with people, just picking up the phone and talking to uh, key employees and talking to new employees more than I ever have in my career. I make it a point every day I'm reserving time to go do that just to make sure that we stay connected with you know our employees as well as our partners. Well, I think the vulnerability, we interviewed a, a, a private equity person on our last uh, uh, SEG TV and get him her show. And it was basically the private equity person said with one of his portfolio companies, a CEO had actually called him. It was, he's crying, you know, and he's like, this is one of his best CEOs. And just saying, am I making the right decisions? I've never experienced this before. And I'm planning this out. I don't know when it ends. I, I'm confused. These are, these are people. These are families that I have to make decisions. And this is the toughest thing I've ever faced. And that vulnerability, like the private equity person said, is, you know, that's just the human element of somebody admitting, I don't have all the answers. And I know I'm a great leader. Yeah. Right. But this is something I've never experienced. Please help me. I, I have to walk through this and talk through this just to come to some, some grips of things that I may have to do in the future, not even necessarily now. So yeah. those are the, the stories we're hearing. It's like, we're all in this together and we all need each other because it is something we've never experienced. Your turn, Lauren. Yeah, I think uh, he's kind of sum up everything. We're doing the same thing. You know, it's really vulnerable, um, frequent, transparent communication. And we're doing it in multiple, multiple mediums. You know, there's a weekly email. There's actually two weekly emails. There's a weekly management call. And then we're doing our monthly, all continue our monthly all hands. And um, we are using videos and, uh, you know, we're sending pictures of home offices so people can see, um, you know, who has the most unique home office. I will tell you that I, I'm doing check-ins like David is doing, you know, try 10, 15 minutes. And uh, when I do that, I get an opportunity to see what that home office is like. And yeah. I've got a salesperson who uh, um, comes from Wisconsin and he would much rather hunt than he would sell. And he does a really good job of selling. And uh, in his home office, it's in the basement and it's basement's finished. There have to be at least 20 deer heads. <laughs> trophies everywhere and not only do they does he have the deer heads and some of them are some pretty nice bucks he has these sheds from the year before and sometimes even two year prior so that's serious so you get to learn a little bit more about people and uh, you know we've got dogs in the background kids in the background I used to be a stickler for not having that and uh, no. now it doesn't even bother me I was on a call today with a uh, my uh, ops leader and he's like, oh, the dog's barking. I'm like, don't worry about it. It's not bothering me. Yeah. Um, Lauren, just so we understand each other, Famous Jewish Hunters is a very thin book. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to give credit to people. They have lives. Yeah. Um, I'm going to throw a leadership thing out and I'd, I'd like your, your feedback. I have always looked at a leader in terms of what's their resilience factor. How do they react, respond, and recover from what's happened to them? Now they can bring all their experience into the meeting, but the outcomes are all unknown. No one knows. And so there's this total hesitancy on the part of the leader for some leaders to do anything. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just frozen. Well, we'll have to wait and see for another week. And meanwhile, they've been waiting for four weeks. Yeah. And all of their people are going, well, well, and they're looking for that response and they're not getting it. And that's part of the panic. Hey, Jeffrey, to your point, um, we had talked about one of the series, the weight room. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting for one of the, the leaders to talk about during this time, I'm in my weight room. Here's how I'm making myself better. Here's how I'm reinventing our company. Here's how I'm reading more books. Here's how I'm, you know, um, restructuring stuff. Why? Because this is my time to set ourselves up really for when the sun comes out. And here's the things that I'm doing. So during this time, I feel like it's even going to make our, our company stronger and better. As hard as it is to be in a crisis, right? But these are the things I'm doing in the weight room. Do you guys have any examples of that? 
Yeah, I can tell you that I've been, uh, I believe that in times where everyone's down is, is the time to really uh, increase your skills. So I'm taking a storytelling class by Seth Godin and I should have looked at how intensive it was when I signed up. My, fir my first hour of the day, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. every day is just trying to catch up let alone keep up on that damn storytelling class. But I've learned so much. They're pushing me so, so much. And so I think uh, it, it reminds me to encourage my people, you know, take 30 minutes a day or an hour when business is a little bit slower and increase your skill set. So when the economy does pick up and the opportunities there, um, you can absolutely be in a better place. And I explained to them that now is not the time to binge watch something. That's for <laughs> losers. Now is the time to to build yourself. Yeah. I have a morning routine. I'm, I'm in my office. Um, it's hard to show you, but I got a pretty big space here. I'm in a thousand square feet. It's my, it's my home, but our home is in our office as well. I live in an old factory. And every morning for the past 25 years, I get up and I spend the first hour of the day on me, most important person in the world. I read, I write, I prepare, and that causes me to think and create. And when I give that formula, and I've been doing it for 25 years and written 16 books in the process. So I'm, I'm telling you it works. I don't watch the, the traffic report because the roads are full. I don't watch the weather because I can look out the window. And I'm, I'm in a position where I'm doing what's important for me. And you would be amazed at how many people wake up in the morning, they take a shower, they drink a cup of coffee, they jump in their car, they get in traffic, and they get to work, quote, on time. And those days are over. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they're faced with themselves in the morning, and they don't even know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm giving people this formula, and it's working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you bring up a good comment. I think as leaders, you got to encourage people to go do that. you got to give them the forms to do it as well and encourage them to do that. Uh, I, I don't know who said it, but you know I, the the thing that keeps uh, chiming in my 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 uh, my brain is you know don't let a good crisis go to waste. Hmm. So there's there's great opportunities when that happens, Lawrence. You you talked about that, you know there's going to be mergers acquisitions that come out of this. There's going to be consolidation that comes out of this. So yep. I think you, as a leader, you got to keep looking for that. Um, somebody early in this process sent me a article from a Navy SEAL of what they do in the middle of a gunfight, right? It's, you know, assess the facts, keep moving forward, have some uh, humility, but, but more importantly, have some sarcasm as you go through it. Don't lose your sense of humor. So those things have really resonated with me is to make sure that you, you focus on the people, you focus on the facts. And, um, you know, we internally just launched a, a LinkedIn learning session, right, for all of our employees to encourage them to go do something special and we're building rewards around it as well so they're the types of things that i think you know as leaders you got to set it as an example 